I grew up in South Africa. It was a place where I first learnt how to be connected. Being in the vast wilderness surrounded by mountains and ravines and wild animals, I felt truly alive. It was also a place where I learnt about humans, about hope and despair, about vulnerability and prejudice, about compassion and loss. But most of all, I learnt about myself and how to be in the moment. I feel we live in a world that is just so disconnected from ourselves, from each other, from those around us. We are at the forefront of a technological revolution, robotics and artificial intelligence. So what does this mean to our world and to us? We've created a machine of partial intelligence that already surpasses our academic human intelligence. It sees more efficiently, reads more efficiently, and makes decisions more efficiently. Artificial intelligence is taking over our minds, not just our jobs or our work. It's addictive, and I don't use the term lightly. It really does alter the neural pathways within the brain. It creates psychological cravings and physical side effects. So what are we going to do when robots have taken our jobs? What are you going to do? Because it's pretty inevitable at some time in the future on quite a large scale. Work gives our life meaning. It gives us a reason to get up in the morning. It gives us identity, financial security. I know for myself, my work is a fundamental part of who I am. Deloitte's University, which is a leadership center in the US, did research on 800 senior executives. And 67% believe that technology will drive greater value than human capital. And I get that, absolutely. But 64% believed people are a cost not a driver of value. So that's you and me, we're not a driver of value. Can you imagine going into work and you are dealing with robots or artificial intelligence, how your body language will change over time? You will have no one to moan about with the boss or no one to laugh or share that human moment. Microsoft Future Proof Yourself report suggests that 65% of school students will be doing jobs that do not exist yet. So what are we doing as parents, coaches, teachers to help young minds to find their true identity, that they can grow, they can be creative, they can use their imagination? Because as we've said so many times today in this talk, that imagination is far more powerful than knowledge. We are not robots, we're human. We breathe, we feel, we dream. And the more we humanize robots, the more we dehumanize society, we, the more we dehumanize ourselves. We need to go back to basics of what it means to be human in order to thrive in this world that we're creating for ourselves, in order to reach our potential. We need to discover who we are, what's our failings, what's what, what we're good at. So it's like, who am I? Thinking about this from a really young age. Things like um, our, if we are whoops, um, resilient, what our goals are, what motivates us, what we really love, what's our passions. Recently, I was working um, at an engineering school here in Toulouse, and it was on leadership and self-awareness. And at the beginning of the project, the students were like, well, you know, we're engineers. Why do we need to know about self-awareness? It's all a bit fluffy. But they realized over time that to be a leader, whether it's yourself or a group, 
You need to know about yourself. You need to be able to identify with others and be compassionate. If I think of my own personal quality, I'd probably think of resilience. I've picked myself up, I've brushed myself down so many times, as a term my mom used to use, that I know I'll be okay. In 2001, when I was in South Africa, back there again, um, I was in a carjacking, a hijacking, and I was physically hurt, an emotional mess. I didn't think I was going to make it. And I abandoned my business, and I went back to the UK to be with my parents. And with the help of my fellow humans, my family, my friends, I picked myself up, and I brushed myself down, and I started all over again. I also know that imagination and intuition keeps me focused and client-centered. So it's about knowing the good bits and the not-so-good bits. So how do we know that we are emotionally connected to others? It's when we can stand up to a bully on behalf of someone else because we can feel what they're going through. It's when we realize that perfectionism does not exist. We're human, gloriously human. It's when we can lie on the grass and dream and watch the clouds go by and not need an app on the phone to show us how to meditate. Because <laughs> you laughed, I've, I've lost. Um, I'd like to end with, we need to be real free, free thinkers being true to ourselves and vulnerable. And this is what makes us human, because we can connect. We are not robots. Thank you.